Hi, my name is Heather, and today I'm going to share with you some Canva keyboard shortcuts that I can't live without. I'll also have a few bonus tips at the end of the video. I want to give a huge thank you to Dwight Layton who allowed me to use his book Peppy's Cloud in this video. I helped him with some of the layout for this book so I had the files on hand and I thought it would be a good way to show you how I use these shortcuts when I'm designing a children's book in Canva. First, I want to start with just the most basic keyboard shortcuts that you can use in any program because I just want to make sure that you know these first. And those are undo and redo and copy and paste. So if you do something like delete someone and you want it back, so you want to undo what you just did, you can just do command or control Z. And then if you want to redo what you did, you can just do command or control Y. So you can switch back through your history and you can go back through a bunch of different things. So if you delete like a bunch of stuff, then you could just do undo a bunch of times and bring it all back. And then copy and paste is just where you click on something and you do command or control C to copy it and then command or control V to paste it. Now that we have those out of the way, let's get into the really cool things that you can do with keyboard shortcuts. And these really help speed up my work and just make me way more efficient. My absolute favorite keyboard shortcut of all time is command or control left bracket and right bracket and what these do is bring an element forward or send it back and i use this constantly if i were to take this character and want to put her in the scene then i could do command or control left bracket to send her backwards and each time that i click it she goes back more and more and then you can do command or control right bracket to bring her forward this is so much quicker and easier than going to the layers panel and bringing her up and down there or going to position and using these buttons here. And then a variation on that is that you can send something all the way to the back or all the way to the front if you just add the option or the alt key, depending on if you're on a Mac or a Windows machine. So on a Mac, I'll just do command option right bracket and it brings her all the way to the front. And if I do command option left bracket, she goes all the way to the back. So she's behind everything, the floor and the bed and everything. And that can be really useful if, say, I find a background image and I just want to send it all the way to the back. Then I'll just do command option left bracket and it's all the way in the back now. Another keyboard shortcut that I use constantly is the zoom in and out and you might already know this because this is also a keyboard shortcut of a ton of programs including your web browser and all you do is command or control plus or minus and you can zoom in and out so i use that a lot because a lot of times i am moving something really little and maybe i just need to get it right in the perfect little spot so I will zoom in really far so that I can really see exactly what I'm doing. Another thing that I use all the time is Shift R and that will show and hide your rulers and guides. And that's really nice because if you're designing a children's book or any other print design in Canva, you're going to need to have guides for your bleed and your safe zone. And when you're designing, you're going to need to pay attention to those guides, but you also want to see what it's going to look like without the guides. So it's really quick to just do Shift R to hide the guide so you can see what your design looks like. And then you can do Shift R again to be able to see the guides so that you can make sure that your text and other important elements stay inside the guides. Here's another one that I use constantly, and it's holding down Alt to make a copy. Say, for example, I want to fill this page with more raindrops, then I can just click on one of the raindrops, hold down Alt on my keyboard, and drag, and it'll make another one. And then I can do it again, and again, and again, and I can even grab a bunch of them and then do it again. I use this all the time. And the other thing is that when you are moving something around, notice how it keeps snapping to align with other items. 
if that's driving you nuts and you're just trying to move it but you can't get it where you want it to be, just hold down control on your keyboard and then you can move it anywhere and it's not going to snap. So then you can get it exactly in that little spot that you want it to be. Another shortcut which I first learned in Photoshop and it also works in Canva, is that you can use the shift button to select multiple elements. Say that I want to move this dresser and the book and the bird, then I can click on the dresser and then hold down shift and click these other pieces, and then I can move them around together. Another really cool thing is that when you select something, if you select it and hold it down, and then you hold down shift, and then drag it, it'll only drag along one axis. So this really helps like if I wanna move the book over, but I still want it to stay on top of the dresser. If I just move it regularly, then I may accidentally move it down too far and I have to go fix it. So if I just hold down shift, then it'll only move to the left or right, or I can have it only move to the top or bottom. Just depending on which way that you're dragging it, it'll just know whether you want it to go left to right or top to bottom. Here's another super useful keyboard shortcut. If I have an element that's behind a bunch of other ones, like all of this stuff is behind the rain, and say I want to select the house and move it, rather than go over to position and to the layers and find it there, I can actually just hold down command or control, and then I can click the house and now I can move it. It's amazing. It will just detect which element you're hovered over and then it will select that element. Also, if you wanna add text to a page, you can just press the letter T and some text will just pop up and you can just start typing. It's so much quicker than going over to the text option on the toolbar. Here's another really cool one. You can modify your font sizes without having to go to the font toolbar. I can change the font size by doing command shift or control shift and then using the comma and the period. So if you just look down at your keyboard, you'll see they're right next to each other. And so that makes it really easy. They're just right here and you can change the font size and see which size you like. You can also do the same thing with the line spacing. For the line spacing, you're going to do command option or Control Alt if you're on Windows, and then you're going to use the up and down keys. And this will increase your line spacing or decrease it. And these may seem like little things, but they really do save a lot of time in the end because you can just really fly through creating a design. And another cool thing is that there's a keyboard shortcut for the copy style up here. You can do Command Option on a Mac or Control Alt on Windows and then C for copy, and then you can just go to another text box or element and do the same thing with a V for paste, and then that will copy and paste that text style. Now you might think, I'm never going to remember these things, and I can see where you would think that because you just see it once and then you might forget it. Well, when I learn programs, I definitely find that these things help me work so much faster. So what I usually do is that when I find a shortcut that I really like, I'll write it on a little piece of paper and I put it on my desk by my computer so that if I need it, I can just glance at it right away because I'm not really going to take the time to Google search it and find it and do it every single time I need it. So if it's right there and I can just glance at it, then that really helps a lot. After you do them a few times, you're going to start picking it up and remembering it. Now I'm just going to show you a few extra tips that helped my workflow a lot when working in Canva. The first is the search tools. So if I go to elements and say I search for cat, if I'm looking for photos, then there are some photos that are cutouts and some that are full photos. Depending on what I'm making, I may want a full photo or I may want a cutout. If I go up here to the filters, then I can select cutouts only. And now it's all the cutout kitty cats. There's also some color filters here, which don't always work great, but you can try it. So if I want all gray cats, I can click the gray. 
and there's all gray cats. But as you can see, there aren't a ton of results, so I think it still needs a little bit of work. But it is good to know because hopefully it will improve more in the future. Another thing that has helped me so much with my workflow is the Google Photos and the Google Drive apps here. Especially because when I'm doing my own illustrations and I illustrate them on the iPad, I have the Google Photos and the Google Drive apps on my iPad. And when I save out as a picture from my iPad, then it'll automatically upload to Google Photos. So I can just go in here to the Google Photos app and just click here. And then all my stuff is here that I've recently uploaded. If it's something that's not a photo, so it's not able to be uploaded to Google Photos, like maybe a layered file, like a Photoshop file or something, then I can upload it to my Google Drive right from my iPad. And then I can just click in here and just find the file and drop it right into my Canva document. So it just saves an extra step of having to go to that program in my web browser, download it onto my computer, and then upload it to Canva. The last thing I wanted to show you is that there's a QR code generator right in Canva. I was so excited to find this because before this, I would go to a different website, generate the QR code, download it to my computer, upload it to Canva. But now that I know there's a QR code generator in here, it's perfect. I can just enter in my URL here and I can enter some customizations if I want to and click generate code. And there's my QR code. And the way that you get the QR code and the Google Photos and Google Drive are they're all just in apps. So you can just go up here and just search for Google Photos and you'll just find it there and you can install it and you can do the QR code. And that one's right there. And there's so many apps here. I definitely recommend just kind of browsing through and seeing if there are some that would be helpful to you for your workflow. That's it for this video. If you have any keyboard shortcuts that you like or Canva tips and tricks, let me know in the comments. And also you can join my creativity club on Facebook and you can share your tips there as well. I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments or as always, you can email me at heather at heathercash.com. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe so I know to make more videos like this. Thanks so much for watching. Bye!